right on from now till the middle of the next round there will be an overlapping of the four and the five manas and the Buddhic principle thus making the nine, our perfected man, the initiate. It might also be remarked that more and more will the control of the fourth Kumara be evidenced and felt. On this I cannot enlarge, being only permitted to make the statement. The consciousness of the mass of the human family will gradually pass on to the fourth subplane of the mental plane, and be more and more controlled by purely concrete mind. Unless this is paralleled by a steady influx of egos onto the Buddhic plane in conscious activity, and thus out of the control of manas pure and simple, a very serious condition will have to be handled by the hierarchy. The work of the four Maharajas to apportion karma within the ring pass knot will reach its culminating point during the fourth round. In the next round, the work of the Lipitu to handle affairs in connection with our system outside the ring pass not will become more prominent. This is necessarily so, as the Lipitu lords dispense the lot of those who have merged themselves with their divine principle, and are no longer held by the material forms of the three worlds. The lords of karma, or the Maharajas, work with the sons of men in the three worlds, and through Manasic principle. 2. In the system. 408-H-E-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E -E -E -E. We have now for consideration some further points on the subject of Manasic development within the system and then we can proceed to discuss the future of Manas, our final subheading. It will be apparent to all of us that the vastness of the subject and the enormous cycles of time involves tend to obscurity and lack of definiteness. Only the highlights stand out, and only broad general concepts, and the impartation of fundamental facts to the exclusion of detail are in any way possible in this treatise. Certain ideas stand out clearly against the background of intricate plans, against the apparent confusion caused by the overlapping of cycles, both great and lesser, and against accumulation of chaotic detail. This apparent chaos, and even seeming contradiction, is the result of our imperfect evolution, the result of our entire lack of perspective incident upon our place in the planetary scheme, and the result of the shortness of our vision. Broad outstanding generalizations are all that we can appreciate at our present state, and they might be summed up as three in number. Position or the place of the system within its greater whole, and the corporate nature of all manifestation. This involves the concept of a cosmic system, involving lesser systems and holding them together by the power of a unified light point or for a solar system, a portion of that greater system of Mani. 44 Diversity from Unity now, according to the adepts of ancient Aryavarta, seven principles are evolved out of these three primary entities. Algebra teaches us that the number of combinations of things, taken one at a time, two at a time, three at a time, and so forth equals 2n1. Applying this formula to the present case, the number of entities evolved from different combinations of these three primary causes amount to 23 to 1 equals 8 to 1 equals 7. As a general rule whenever seven entities are mentioned in the ancient occult sciences of India in any connection whatsoever, you must suppose that these seven entities come into existence from three primary entities, and that these three entities, again, are evolved out of a single entity or monad, the Theosophist, Volume 8, P44. 
attraction is governed by the law of attraction and repulsion and 45 I use the word unit in connection with all that is in any degree self-conscious or individualized. It must, therefore, be remembered that this phrase refers to nothing below the human kingdom. T-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 411 Therefore comes more under what we call the second aspect, yet self-consciousness itself is the result of the manasic principle, and the close cooperation between these two factors of mind and love wisdom, or the two laws of attraction and synthesis, must ever be carefully remembered. Limitation This is a prima factor to be borne in mind in considering a cosmos, a system, a chain, a chain, or any form of limiting sphere down through them all to the physical atom of the scientist. It presupposes A, B, C Capacity beyond that manifested Duality, or that which is limited and the limiting substance. Purpose, for in an ordered scheme of existence, the limitation persists just as long as it is required in order to attain certain ends. It is succeeded by, abstraction, occultly understood, and in its literal sense. When these three factors, position, relation, limitation, are studied within the system, the close connection of all the groups within the whole will be evident, and the need of each part for all other parts will be brought out. As regards cosmic position, relation and limitation, little can be said, as seen to the heavenly men themselves the matter is obscure. That this is necessarily so must be apparent when their place in the scheme of things is realized and their relative unimportance is considered. Therefore, you can do no more than accept the fact of the inconceivable magnitude of that existence which is manifesting through seven solar systems, and the extension of this concept is being to 412 ATREATISE on cosmic fire. Embrace the entire bulb of the heavens. It is interesting to bear in mind in this connection that all that is seen, being objective forms or beings in manifestation through certain spheres of light, may not be all that is, but that there may lie back of everything visible a vast realm or realms of existences. The very brain of man reels in. Contemplation of such a concept. Yet just as there are tens of millions of human beings out of objective manifestation, or discarnate, on the subtler planes of the solar system, so there may be cosmic entities, in rank equal to the one about Wong not maybe say, or in a similar sense discarnate, and found in realms subtler than that of the manifestation of life. 3. On the Earth. A. The Five Kumaras. We might now consider briefly the subject of the Five Kumaras, who are the sum total of manas on the Earth. I have stated that the Lord of the World, the first Kumara, is the planetary logos of our scheme in physical incarnation, but nowhere has the impression been conveyed that the three Kumaras associated with him are three other planetary logoi. This is in no way the case. These three, all those leaders of activity, are but the vicegerents upon our planet of those three planetary logos, who, with our planetary logos, make the sum total of the logoic quaternary. Associated with them are the three esoteric. 
Amaras, mentioned in the Sacred Doctrine, 46 who represent the three other Logoi, and so make focal points for all the Logoic forces within our chain. In each chain such representatives are found, six focal points embraced by the seventh, the planetary logos of the scheme, who holds them all within his aura. 46 S. P. I. 493. Their work is threefold. T-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 413. First, they are the centers in the body of the planetary logos. Each chain corresponds to one center, and the globes are but the retro wheels within any particular center. The life of the logos in this incarnation on the earth is flowing through three centers and beginning to stimulate a fourth. Hence four globes are involved in the three Kumaras, so called for lack of a better term, are vitally intelligently active. Three are in abeyance and one is beginning to function. The globes correspond to the chains. This fourth Kumara is yet practically unrealized, but as hinted at earlier, his day is about to dawn. Second, they act as transmitters of a particular type of force to those units who go to the content of any particular center. They are, in fact, the agents for the lords of the race to the monads of any ray in incarnation in any particular chain and on any particular globe. Third, they are the agents for A, B, C, D. The lord of a ray is stated above. The four Maharajas, the planetary logos of their own team. The great diva of the earth planet. They work with the law. They are the cognizers of the intelligent purpose of the planetary logos, and know his plans. They are the vital activity of the planet, and in a subtle sense they are not only the ray representatives but likewise the link between the chain and the scheme. Here be stated that the relevant failure that was the fate of the moon chain in our scheme has greatly handicapped their work, and made it imperative for them to employ drastic measures in order to offset that failure. Herein lies another clue to the world turmoil. 414 ATREATISONCOSMICFIRE B. The Moon Chain it might be of interest here, if, before passing on to other matters, we took up the very difficult subject of the new chain and answer certain pertinent questions that may have arisen in the minds of students. The enumeration of the chains and of the schemes is given in the two charts as entirely for the present, and covers a period comparatively recent, carrying forward the history of evolution to the middle of the next round in our Had we been given the charts embracing pre-Lemurian days, and extending back a distance, into the humanly speaking unfathomable past, we would have seen the moon chain portrayed with the Neptune chain omitted. In the chart as given two chains are apparently lacking, the moon chain and the Uranus chain. The reasons are abstruse, but something may be hinted at as follows. The moon chain with the earth chain form two units, or two polarities, negative and positive. C. Point of merging was reached, and the earth chain absorbed or synthesized the moon chain in the same sense as certain of the schemes will merge until only three will apparently be left. Therefore the earth chain is essentially whole in its nature, being the sum total of a male and a female chain. This is a mystery impossible to elucidate. Further, but it is dealt with in certain occult books, and hinted at by H.
48 has its origin in the events which brought the moon chain to a terrific culmination. Conditions of agony and of distress such as are found on our planet are found in no such degree in any other scheme. 48. It is he, again, who holds spiritual sway over the initiated adepts throughout the whole world. He is, as said, the nameless one, who has so many names, and yet whose names and whose very nature are unknown. He is the initiator, called the great sacrifice. For, sitting at the threshold of light, he looks into it from within. The circle of darkness which he will not cross, nor will he quit his post till the last day of this life cycle. Why does the solitary watcher remain at his self-chosen post? Why does he sit by the fountain of primeval wisdom, of which he drinks no longer, for he has not to learn which he does not know I, neither on this earth, nor in its heaven? Because the lonely, sore-footed pilgrims, on their journey back to their home, are never sure, to the last moment, of not losing their way, in this limitless desert of illusion and matter called Earth life. Because he would fain show the way to that region of freedom and light, from which he is a voluntary exile himself, to every prisoner who has succeeded in liberating himself from the bonds of flesh and illusion. Because, in short, he has sacrificed himself for the sake of mankind, though but a few elect may profit by the great sacrifice. S. D. I. 229. T. H. E. F. A. C. T. O. R. O. F. M. A. N. A. S. 417. The misuse of the vibratory power of a certain center, and the perversion, or distortion of force to certain erroneous ends, not along the line of evolution, account for much of the new history. Certain results, such as the finding of its polar opposite, were hastened unduly on the moon chain, and the consequence was an uneven development and the retardation of the evolution of a certain number of Viva and human groups. The origin of the feud between the Lords of the Dark Face and the Brotherhood of Light, which found scope for activity in Atlantean days, and during the present root race, can be traced back to the Moon Chain. We have here all that it is possible to give out at this time, and much that has hitherto not been permitted publication. It is necessary again to emphasize the need of attaching no importance to the names of the chains and globes, and the necessity of a numerical enumeration, at the same time should the student decide to number the chains and globes, he must carefully bear in mind that the sequence of numbers has no reference or relation to place or time, nor to sequence of appearance or order of manifestation. I V B F U T U R E O F M A N A S. It is only intended to handle this immense subject primarily in its relation to man, leaving the student to work out for himself much of what might be said, and to expand the concept from the unit to the group, and from the group to the totality of groups within the solar system. We will only touch upon the development of the mind in man and hint at some probable development. We shall endeavor to show that manas, as it evolves, leads to certain distinct characteristics which 418-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E Distinguish it from other developments which may be seen. The subject therefore will be discussed under the following subheadings. 1. The characteristics of manas. 2. 
probable developments of the human mind. 3. Manas in the final rounds. In studying all these points the emphasis is, of course, to be laid upon the future, and I enlarge not upon that which is already developed. 1. Characteristics of Manas The main characteristics of Manas might be summed up under three heads. A. Discrimination B. Ordered activity Circa. Adaptability let us study these a little and note wherein in days and cycles to come they will be seen working out. A. Discrimination. This is necessarily almost the statement of a platitude. All students recognize the discriminative quality of manas and its selective capacity. All recognize the faculty in man which enables him to distinguish intelligently between the self and the not-self. What we are apt to forget is that this faculty persists on all planes, and is threefold in manifestation. First, discrimination between the iconsciousness and that which is cognized in the external world. This is the ability to distinguish between oneself and all other forms extant. It is universally developed and has reached a fairly high stage of evolution. Second, discrimination between the ego and the personality. This narrows the concept down to the sphere of a man's own consciousness and enables him to differentiate between his subjective self or soul and the bodies which hold that soul in shrine. This is not P-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 419 by any means so universally developed. Most men do not as yet distinguish with accuracy between themselves as the thinker persistent in time and space, and the vehicle through which they think, which is ephemeral and transient. The real recognition of this essential duality, and the scientific appreciation of it is to be seen in the mystics, the advanced thinkers of the race, the conscious aspirants, and those nearing the portal of initiation. Third, discrimination between soul and spirit, or the realization by the man that not only can he say, I am, not only can he realize that, I am that, but that he can advance to a still further realization, and say, I am. That I am. In all these expansions and appreciations the discriminative faculty of manas is utilized. Therefore, we can see for ourselves the future development and where it will lead mankind. Man now knows himself as a separated unit of consciousness. He now distinguishes between himself and all other materialized selves. He now realizes himself as distinct from every other functioning sphere of matter from the materialized logos to the cell in his own physical body, and the cell in all bodies on the physical plane. This separative instinct, this distinguishing self-centeredness has been the nursery wherein the infant, man, has segregated himself until he is at full strength, and able to take his share in the work of his group. Only the voluntary merging of interest and of aim is of value, and only that is seen in man as he nears the final part of the path of evolution. It is incident upon an earlier stage of intense self-assertion and intense self-realization. This stage is with us now, it marks all manifestation, and is the basis of the preservation of identity. It distinguishes. 428-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E the logos and all forms within his body, the planetary logoi and all forms within their bodies, man and all forms within his body, that which
which must be emphasized is the little realized concept that this assertion of I am distinguishes not only man, but is a mantra word which preserves the integrity of all groups likewise. When man can say, I am that, he is beginning to sense his oneness with his group. When groups make a similar assertion they are beginning to realize their identity with all other groups. When a planetary logos echoes the words, I am that, he is approaching the hour of synthesis or of absorption. When a solar logos utters the words, a year of Brahma will be drawing to a close, and the hour of conscious merging with this greater group will be approaching. Broadly, in relation to man, it might be stated that I am, refers to the personality consciousness on three lower planes, or to all that is considered as inferior to the causal body. It concerns a man's realization of his place upon the globe within a chain. I am that, refers to his egoic consciousness, and to the planes of the triad. It concerns a man's realization of his place within the chain, and his relationship to the group of which he forms a part. I am that I am refers to a man's monitive consciousness, and his relationship to the planes of abstraction. It concerns his realization of his position in the scheme. When the initiate can say, I am that I am, then he has merged himself with his divine essence, and is freed from form. The first occult assertion marks his emancipation from the three lower kingdoms, and his con. T-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 421 Sky is functioning in the three worlds. This occurred at individualization through the instrumentality of Manas. The second occult assertion marks the gradual emancipation of man from the lower three kingdoms, and his complete freeing from lower form domination at the good initiation. As a final assertion, the initiate not only distinguishes between himself and all other forms of manifestation, he not only distinguishes between his own identity and the soul, as well as matter and form, but he can discriminate between the three spirits, souls, and matter and with this realization he is entirely liberated from manifestation for this greater cycle. This inherent, discriminative faculty of manas, displayed on ever higher spirals leads a man into matter and form through all forms of matter on all planes and finally brings about his eventual abstraction from all forms and matter plus the aggregate of transmuted knowledge which the evolutionary process has procured for him b ordered activity here comes the concept of intelligent purpose, pursuing a fixed and settled plan, and working out a preconceived ideal in time and space. The microcosm comes into incarnation through impulse based on intelligent purpose originating in this case on the mental plane the plane of the manifest principle. An interesting point might here be indicated. The fifth plane, the mental, may be considered on a large scale as holding, in the case of a heavenly man, a position symbolically analogous to that held by the causal bodies of the units on his ray. Some causal bodies are on the third and some on the second subplane, and the intricacy is excessive and various, producing geometrical forms allied somewhat to those portrayed upon the charts. All is ordered activity of the units each sphere. 422 ATREATISE on cosmic fire. 
pursuing his own self-centered purpose and following the inclination of the lower self, whose slogan is, I am. This will gradually give place to the ordered activity of the groups in which the units recognize the oneness of their self-interest, and therefore intelligently, actively, and with conscious purpose work for the good of the body. Corporate. The vibration which occultly accompanies the sounding of the words, I am met, by the units on the physical plane is only very faintly beginning to make itself felt.